Let's go back to Exodus chapter 8. And we are going to verse number verse number 20. Zelina, thank you for reading the sacred scriptures for us tonight. You're welcome. And uh, we want to thank you Victoria for doing an excellent work for many days now reading. Mm -hmm. Right, let's go. Where are we? Verse number Okay. And the Lord said to Moses, Rise early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh as he comes out to the water. Then say to him, Thus says the Lord, Let my people go that they may serve me. Or else, if you will not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies on you and your servants, on your people, and into your houses. The houses of the Egyptians shall be full of swarms of flies, and also the ground on which they stand. Verse 22. And in that day I will set apart the land of Goshen, in which my people people dwell, that no swarms of flies shall be there, in order that you may know that I am the Lord in the midst of the land. Okay, so you see, from now on, God is going to separate the land of Goshen, the part of Egypt that Joseph gave to his family. God is now going to separate them from the rest of Egypt. So from now on, whatever plague, because now plagues, I want you to understand that plagues stand for judgment. Whenever you see a plague, it is a judgment that is on. When you see the economy crash, it stands for judgment. Let me tell you what is going to happen around the world with wicked people. God has decided in a meeting that he is going to take intelligence away from smart people. It doesn't matter how educated or rich they are. God is going to create something among them that they will jump and follow. They will feel this is the right way to do things. This is great. And they will make terrible mistakes. Let, let me warn you. God is going to allow wicked people make terrible mistakes that will turn to their ruin. By the way, I want to send out a shout out to Adrina, my daughter. You guys don't know who that is. I have a daughter by name Adrina. I want to send out a shout out to her that the whole world may hear. This girl is at the top of the world and the top of her class. At this, at this time a year ago or so, the mother confronted me and told me to do something with God for the enhancement of her mind. People of God, I saw her great today. There is not one B. It is A from beginning to the end. Everything is A. Yeah. This is big. This is big. I also want to send a shout out to another big daughter of mine, a great daughter, Kiwana. Go and look at her great. She's already doing college 
classes in high school. So you see, God is not a fairy tale. You are not to pursue a fairy tale. You are to pursue the God that solves practical problems. For example, I want my sons and my daughters to have a sharpened mindset. It's on. So congratulations to you girls. Hmm. I am I, I was just full of joy and amazement. Wow. Let's continue. Let, let me share something that you need to hear very quickly. One of the most dangerous prayers you can pray for people who don't like you is for them to make very foolish mistakes and they are taken away by their own reasoning. Their own reasoning will be the reason for their destruction. Go ahead, my dear. Verse 23. I will make a difference between my people and your people. Tomorrow this sign shall be. Okay, listen to this. Stop seeing yourself that you are the same like everybody else. Even though they are the same race, the same nation, see yourself as different. I am going to make sure that from now on, that even if all of you were born of the same womb, but you are going to be different. Samantha and Kyle, hello, where are you guys tonight? Even if everyone are broke, you are not going to be broke. Amen. I'm going to make a difference between my people and the rest of the world. Bishop. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Florence. Very powerful girl. Yeah. Even if everyone studied in the same college, but you are going to be different. You had the same degree. Your degree is going to be different. Because you placed it at the altar of fire. You brought yourself Many of you who come to other, who come from other countries as immigrants, you are going to reach a place where you're going to separate yourself from the country that you come from so that you can become somebody. You're going to let go of some cultures that doesn't save you right anymore. Continue reading, my dear. And the Lord did so. Thick swarms of flies came into the house of Pharaoh, into his servants' houses, and into all the land of Egypt. The land was corrupted because of the swarms of flies. Continue. Then Pharaoh, then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, Go sacrifice to your God in the land. And, Mo and Moses said, It is not right to do so, for we would be sacrificing the abomination of the Egyptians to the Lord our God. If we sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians before their eyes, then will they not stone us? Okay, read, read again. Is that verse number 26? Okay. Yeah. And Moses said, It is not right to do so, for we would be sacrificing the abomination of the Egyptians to the Lord our God. If we sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians before their eyes... 
Okay, this is what Pharaoh is saying. If you want to go and worship your God and sacrifice to him, why not do it here in Egypt? Why do you need to go somewhere else to go and worship your God? And let's hear what Moses said. Verse number 26. Go ahead, my dear Zelina. There you go. If we sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians before their eyes, then will not will they not stone us? Okay, stop there. <laughs> the land of Egypt is land of demons, land of the dead. Every way is not for holy things. God has already given instruction that they are to leave. See, all this time, what is happening is what we call negotiation. There is a clash of powers and there is also political negotiation and calculation. And Pharaoh is saying, why don't you just do the sacrifice here? Why do you need to, to go and do it somewhere else? And these guys are saying, huh? we are not doing it here. We don't want your people to see what we do. There are certain things that are secret to us. And we don't want to offend you people with the way we do things. We are trying to make life easy for you guys and for us. So there was a lot of political maneuvering. Trying to see who will take whose queen or king on the, on the game of chess here. What was at the bottom of all this? The economy. If we lose these people, our economy will fail. Now, let me tell you something you need to know. The economy of Egypt is robust. It's doing well because of free slave labor. A lot of people are after you because they are having free slave labor, free slave money. Some of you are slaves to your families. You are slaves to people. You need to tell God to remove you from people who are holding you slavery openly or secretly. Go to the next verse. Verse 27. Verse 27. We will go three days journey into the wilderness and sacrifice to the Lord our God as he will command us. So Pharaoh said... So let, let's... Will, uh -huh, uh -huh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So See, said, the, 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 the game here, the game here is three days we go, but you know they are not coming back. So they are trying to put it in a nice way. They don't want to leave anything behind. Now let me tell you what has happened. The serpent, the blood, the frogs, the lies, L-I-C-E, or, or, or not, G-N-A-T-S in some Bible. Then the flies. Life was miserable now. The economy was being laid west. Work came to a standstill. Nobody could work anymore. How do you think people are going to work with flies all over, frogs all over? 
The economy was forced to come to a standstill. People who were supposed to come to Egypt to come and do business with them, all of them turned back when they saw what was going on. With judgment of plagues, God using creatures of nature to deal with them, he destroyed their economy. He destroyed the Egyptians. What made them proud was their riches. He began to lay where's their riches. The Hebrew slaves were no longer working because you can't go to work like that with frogs everywhere. You can't, you don't have water to drink. So how are you even going to make bricks? No way. So this means that for several months, the economy of Egypt was wasted. Their stock market came to an end. Pharaoh doesn't know who he is ruling over anymore. <laughs> mm -hmm. People were now rising up against him. His own people. I'm now telling you what was really happening behind the scene. His own people began to rise up against him. People began to die of disease. Listen. People began to die of disease. Egyptians began to die. The young, the elderly, and also the strong began to die. Do you know what it means for frogs to be everywhere in your home, in your bathroom, on your bed? So they didn't have no sleep. That's the meaning. Frogs were coming from everywhere. And can you believe the noise of frogs Roar, 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 everywhere. Can you sleep with that kind of stuff? How many frogs are you going to kill before you get tired of it? We are talking of inside what bedroom, there are thousands and millions of frogs. You're scooping them out, they are coming right back in. People's trying to Get frogs out. Set their houses on fire. It was crazy. Institutions closed. You can't even ride your chariots. Horses died. Do you know the sickness that the frogs caused? Or the sickness that the blood caused? Or the sickness that the lies caused? Do you know the sickness that the flies caused? The dysentery. Those of you who are medic into who are into medicine should tell us better. When there is that kind of flies, all everywhere, inside the house, inside the kitchen, flies buzzing on your ears, flies on your hair, flies everywhere. What kind of health risk do that cause? It transmits diseases. There you go. There was so much death in Egypt. They've never seen anything like this. There was more death among Egyptians than the death of the Hebrew children they've killed for a long time. Some of the magicians began to die. It was a terrible thing. So, what was happening now was, there was an insurrection. People were beginning to rise against their leaders. The Pharaoh and his household. And for the first time, he knew that his throne was no longer safe. His people began to plot how to assassinate them. 
the magicians were no longer safe because they couldn't deliver. They were now running for their lives. And people began to plot how to kill them and get rid of them because they are the cause of this problem. Why not just let the people go? What's the problem? I've lost a wife. I've lost a daughter. I've lost a son. The military began to crumble. The army of Egypt began to crumble. See, all these things you are hearing that was happening to the Egyptians is what we call a curse. C-U-R-S-E. If you didn't know it. God, through Moses and Aaron, released a curse upon the land. And then there was a blanket of cloud that came upon Egypt. And that white blanket separated the land where the Hebrew children, the Israelites lived from the rest of the land. So everything that is happening to the Egyptians was not coming to that side. It's like rain is falling on one side of the city and the rest of the city, all their plants, their plants, crops, everything is dead. Scorching heat has killed everything. But at the other side, you just cross from one one street to the other street, constant rainfall, plants are growing, people are enjoying. That's what was happening here. Now, how is that possible? What do you call this? Is this not the finger of God? Write this down for me, Mary. The power of God's retaliation. Retaliation. That's the title of this broadcast. The power of God's retaliation. Zel uh, Zelina, keep reading, please. Verse 28. So Pharaoh said, I will let you go that you may sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness. Only you shall not go very far away. Intercede for me. Only you shall not go very far away. It should be where I can keep my eye on you. I will send soldiers to follow you guys. Very soon he will tell them, Oh, you can go all by yourself. You shouldn't take your wife and children. See, let me tell you. Those who hate you do not like you. Write that down. Those who hate you do not like you and do not like your progress. People can tell you all they want to do for you. They don't like you and they do not like your progress. They do not want you to be as wealthy, as educated, as rich as they are. You have to come to terms with that. It is you yourself that is going to make yourself rich, you and your God. Go ahead, read the next verse. Then Moses said, Indeed, I am going out from you, and I will entreat the Lord that the swarms of flies may depart tomorrow from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people. But let Pharaoh not deal deceitfully anymore and not letting the people go to sacrifice to the Lord. So Moses went out from Pharaoh and entreated the Lord. And the Lord did according to the word of Moses. He removed the swarms of flies from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people. Not one remained. But Pharaoh hardened his heart at this time also. Neither would he let the people go. Let's go to chapter 9. Chapter 
after that. What? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Geneva, okay. do, Geneva, do you have your Bible? Yes. Okay, I want you to read Exodus chapter 9. Let Zelina take a little rest. I am showing you guys step by step how the power of God is revealed. How God is so patient even with wicked people. And yet, they still end up killing themselves with their rebellion. Go, go on, verse 1. Exodus 9 1. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Go to Pharaoh and tell him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go, that they may serve me. But if thou, but if thou refuse to let them go, and wilt yet hold them still, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thy flock which is in the field, for upon the horses, upon the asses, upon the camels, upon the cattle, and upon the sheep, shall be a mighty great moraine. And the Lord shall do wonderfully between the pieces of Israel and the pieces of Egypt, so there shall nothing die at all that pertaineth to the children of Israel. And the Lord appointed a time, saying, Tomorrow the Lord shall finish this thing in this land. So the Lord did this thing on the morrow. And all the cattle of Egypt died. But the cattle of the children of Israel died not one. Then Pharaoh sent, and behold, there was not one of the cattle of the Israelites dead. And the heart of Pharaoh was abstinent, and he did not let the people go. And the Lord said to Moses and to Aaron, Take your handful of ashes of the furnace, and Moses shall sprinkle them toward the heaven and the sight of Pharaoh, and they shall be turned to dust in all the land of Egypt. And it shall be as a scab breaking out into blisters upon man and upon beasts throughout all the land of Egypt. Then they took ashes of the furnace and stood before Pharaoh. And Moses sprinkled them toward the heaven. And there came a scab breaking out into blisters upon man and upon beasts. And the sorcerers could not stand before Moses. Because okay, where are you reading? Where are you reading? I'm at Exodus uh, number 11 now. You are number 11. Okay, I've gone, I've gone ahead of you. Okay, go ahead. And the sorcerers could not stand before Moses because of the scab. For the scab was upon the enchanters and upon all the Egyptians. And the Lord hardened the hearts of Pharaoh. Okay, you see, not. you see what is happening here? God killed off the animals of the Egyptians and yet they didn't learn a lesson and now he told Moses to take ashes from the fireplace stand before Pharaoh and just shoot it into the air just throw the ashes into the air and it will become another plague sickness and a plague break out upon humans including on the magicians themselves that is boils boils broke out on people that is the kind of boil that when it break out after a while it will break open and stink So when people are sleeping, you can imagine how the bedrooms think. Just think. Boils broke out on people's head. Inside their, their head, boils broke out. Boils grew on people's butt and broke out. 
boils on their hands, boils on their belly, boils everywhere. People were busy scratching, dressing up wounds, boils breaking out on their faces. It was terrible. The magicians themselves were all suffering from boils. Pear, what do we call this kind of thing? Where is Miss Pearl, the doctor? It's an infection. It was an infection. So Moses Moses made an infection. <laughs> an infection. Yep. Yeah. And these are the kind of boils that it will grow and it will burst open. And in this place, another one is growing. It's terrible stuff. So you wear your clothes, a new kind a new cloak. By the time you know it is full of bursting boils, you stink. Everyone were funky. That's terrible stuff. <laughs> and the children of Israel saw this happening to the Egyptians, and it was not coming to their own end of the of the of the of the country. Continue, continue reading. And listen now, this this the the game is now advanced. It's now coming to him. I'm going to smite you personally. Please, can you read that again? That's verse number. With verse number fifteen. Yeah, that's where I am. Continue. See that? You've been given enough time to let the people go. You refused because you love power. You love control. You're a control freak. Well, it's coming to you. It is now no longer against the land. It's now a contest between me and you. And you shall perish so that you will know that you are human and you are no God. Now I'm making it one on one. It's you versus me. You pray supernatural prayer, you do supernatural warfare so that those who want to use you for economic gain. For profit, they now have to face God one on one. And they are going to perish from the earth. And you do not need to cry for them. Because they know exactly what they are doing. Keep reading, my dear. It's no longer God versus the country. It's now certain people are now being, the ringleaders are going to be taken out. So that's what God is telling him. You're going to perish. Keep reading, my dear. Verse 16. Exodus 9 and 16. And indeed, for this cause have I appointed thee to show my power in thee and to declare my name throughout all the world. 
Now stop there. Are you guys seeing something here? Many people are permitted to go to the position of power so that they will be destroyed. Get what I'm saying? Do not clap when certain people are in charge. Because people will be coming to come and tell you it is the Lord who set them up. I am old enough to know that people are given money and position of authority for two reasons. One, for judgment against them. The position of power and the money is the instrument that God is going to use to entice them to come and get killed. Are you guys getting it? That's why you go to some places, you see some big castles, big mansions, Nobody lives there. Everybody has run away. They are waiting for who will have the courage to tear you down. In the garage are choice cars. Nobody drives them. Why? Have you seen that kind of thing before? Behind the house are jets. And the original owner is dead. Why are the children not flying that jet? Why are they not living in that house? Why are they not driving the Rolls Royce? That's true. Why? The world is littered with mansions, jets, cars, and nobody wants it. Why do they not want it? Have you asked yourself that question? Because God decided that the best way to take these kind of people out is to allow them to have wealth and riches so that the riches will turn around and kill them. That's how it is. Others are given wealth and riches so that it can keep them alive and they will do good with it. Let me tell you something. If you are a very evil man and woman and you want political position so badly, God will draw you out to battle. He's going to do it by allowing you to win an election and become a governor or a president. And he will make sure that it has been decreed and permitted for you to win so that he can use that position to kill you and to destroy everything that belongs to you forever including your sons, your daughters, your wife, your family members, and those who associate with you. If you didn't know it, know it now. So while you are clapping, it was the Lord who made that man a governor. It was the Lord who chose that person to be an archbishop or a pope. While you are clapping, it is the Lord who has given this person a marriage. It is the Lord who has made this person a prime minister and a king. Be careful that you have gone to the presence of the Lord to ask for the truth. Hmm. Be careful. Because along the way, the world is going to ridicule you. They will remember that you are among the group that said it was the Lord that chose that person. Now it's too late in some countries. That's why you don't hear the voices of many prophets because they are ashamed. Because when that person that you were clapping hand goes down, you are going down with that person. The tree that you thought the Lord set up to grow is going to be chopped down and every animal and birds and reptiles that came under its wing to have shelter is going down with it. This is what is going to happen in Russia, in the United States. Let me tell you, 
in China, in the Arab world, in Turkey, in Eastern Europe, a lot of Eastern Europe, many countries of Africa, the Middle East, a lot of Asian countries, they are going to experience this. So stop clapping for them. Just stand aside and watch. One of our musicians called Felakuti, he says, those who do not know are clapping. And those who know stand back and are watching. Please, you know that when we are doing conferences like this, everything went very quickly. I want you to have the discipline of spending time to charge your phone, plug your laptop, and go through our broadcast so that you get the real thing. Because when I'm ministering like this, everything goes really fast. And there's a lot of things that you do not get. Until you go through the, the video or the audio, then you get it. Those who do not know are clapping. Those who know stand back and are watching. Keep reading, my dear. Exodus 9 and 17. Yet thou exaltest thyself against my people. You see that? See that? Verse 16 and 17 is now one on one. You do battle prayer so that God himself will come to do battle. There's a place for angels. There's a place for the man and woman of God, that is you. But there's also a different thing that happens. It's a place where God do not sit and watch. He then decides to step in of his own. That's what you see in verse 16 and verse 17. Please, can you read verse 17, sweet girl? Yes, thou exhortest thyself against my people. Mm -hmm. And let us them not go. Okay. Behold, tomorrow this time I will cause to rain a mighty great hell, such as was not in Egypt since the foundation thereof was laid unto this time. So God is going to send thunder, lightning, hell. H A I L. How many people have seen hell stones? Big, big, fat hailstones are going to fall on the land and it's going to lay west the land. This is crazy. One man's ambition for power is going to destroy the land. See, what I'm doing during this June, I'm preparing you for what you're going to see tomorrow. It's, there's a showdown coming. And you, and you will stand back and say, there was a prophet called Edekai Mary who prepared us for what we are about to see. Continue. Continue. Continue, my dear. Verse 19. Send therefore now and gather the cattle and all that thou hast in the field. For upon all the men and the pieces which are found in the field and not brought home, the hail shall fall upon them and they shall die. Okay. Anybody who is not inside the house will be killed in the outdoors. Don't stay in the street because hell, thunderbolt, lightning is coming. Lightning will set some houses on fire will set fields on fire. Terror is coming upon the land. Continue, my dear. Such then as feared the word of the Lord among the servants of Pharaoh, made his servants and his castle flee into the houses. Okay, those who fear the Lord. Read that again. That's verse number... 20. 20. Okay. Those among the household... Now, now... Now people are now against Pharaoh, his own people. 
when his people hear, there is hell, thunder, lightning coming. Those of them, read that verse again so that you hear. Okay, those who, who began to take what is happening very serious, now brought their servants indoors. They began to find a place for their flocks. Go ahead. Made his servants and his cattle flee into the houses. Okay. But such as regarded not the word of the Lord, Left his servants and his cattle in the field. And the Lord said to Moses, Stretch forth thy hand toward heaven, yep. that there may be hail in the land of Egypt, yep. upon man, and upon beast, and upon all the herds of the field in the land of Egypt. Okay. When you stretch forth your hand towards the heaven, towards the sky, you are calling things to come. Go ahead, my dear. Then Moses stretched out his rod toward heaven, and the Lord sent thunder and hail and lightning upon the ground. And the Lord caused hail to rain upon the land of Egypt. Continue. So there was hail and fire mingled with the hail. You see? Fire was mingled with hell, and it fell all over Egypt, burning stuff. Laying, God is laying the land west. Continue, my dear. And they have smoked throughout all the land of Egypt, all that was in the field, both man and beast. They all died. Continue. See that? Do you hear that? He's now confessing who he is. We are wicked people. Continue. Send them back to famine. The land now suffered from lack of food. Their crops all were burnt. Because when I saw hell mingle with fire, I knew where we were heading with this. It's burning up the crops. Now, what do you think is going to happen to people without food? Will they listen to their king? Huh? What is the first thing that you use to conquer a people and keep them quiet? What do you do to keep a people quiet? Huh? <laughs> Mary, are you laughing? <laughs> what do you do to keep a people quiet so that they don't rebel against you? What is it? Okay. 
give them food. They don't care about shelter. They will talk about food. They will talk about shelter later. They will talk about shelter later. They want food first. Nobody cares about shelter. Let them eat first. Then shelter comes second. And so God knows where to hurt your enemies. Please listen to me. The Lord God knows where to hurt your enemies. When you kneel to pray and fast and do battle prayers, you are arming God with the ammunition to hurt your enemies where they will never recover. Now the people had food. Now there is no more food. The crops have been destroyed. Okay? When there is no more crop in the land, what, what do people normally do? When there is no food, and the king cannot supply them food and his household, there is no storehouses with food like, like Joseph did, what will happen to that land? The people will rise up against their rulers. They will rebel against him. People want their tummy to be filled first. You fill their tummy, you keep them calm. You give them alcohol, they go to bed. Simple. And they are not coming to go and talk and fight you because they fill their tummy and have alcohol in their head. So filling people's tummy is the first law of keeping them quiet and satisfied even if every other thing is going wrong. Tell me about it, says Mary. Geneva, keep reading. I like the way you are reading tonight. You, you are really born again. Exodus 9 and 32. Okay. And the wheat and the rye were not mentioned, so they were hid in the ground. Then Moses went out of the city from Pharaoh and spread his hands to the Lord. And the thunder and the hail ceased. Neither rain it upon the earth. So some some crops, some crops were bent, some remained. That's what we are seeing here. Continue. Exodus 9 and 34. And when Pharaoh saw that the rain and the hail and the thunder were ceased, he sinned again and hardened his heart, both he and his servants. Let's read that place again. I think that is verse... Number 34. Okay, 31. The barley and the flax was smitten. Where is the other one? The barley and the, that was verse 31. Okay, let's read verse 32. But the wheat. The wheat is 32. Okay, the wheat and the, what is that? The rye. The rye, okay. Were not smitten. Why? For they were hidden in the ground. Oh, they were not yet grown up. The wheat and the rye were still tender. They were still coming out of the ground. They were not yet grown. They have not yet come out. So this happened at the time that the wheat and the rye were being planted while they, will, they, while they will have started the harvest of the barley and the flax. See what is going on here. This was the season that they've just planted the wheat and the rye. And this was the season when they are supposed to harvest the barley and the flax. Isn't that interesting? So it's going to take them. <laughs> the economy is ruined. Continue, my dear. Continue verse 34 that you are reading. And the barrel that the rain and the hail and the 
thunder were ceased, he said again, and hardened his heart, both he and his servant. Okay, continue. That's the end of chapter 9. You see how long it takes for deliverance to happen. Think, think about that. Let's go to chapter 10. This is interesting. Okay, see, the reason why you pray is for God to perform miracles for you and to do judgment against your enemies that should be documented so that you will tell your children and children's children about the power of the Lord. Now, what we are seeing in verse number two, is that God do not want you to take your deliverance lightly. It is to save as a token of the reality of His presence and power for you and His mighty judgment against your enemies. Go ahead. Exodus 10 and 3. Then came Moses and Aaron unto Pharaoh, and they said unto him, Thus saith the Lord God of Hebrews, How long wilt thou refuse to humble thyself before me? Let my people go, that they may serve me. But if they refuse to let my people go, behold, Tomorrow will I bring grasshoppers into thy coasts, and I shall cover the face of the earth, so that a man cannot see the earth, and they shall eat the residue which remaineth unto you, and have escaped from the hell. And they shall eat all your trees that bed in the field. Okay, listen. God is now sending locusts, grasshoppers, anything with a big belly, any flying insect with a big belly that can eat. Come and eat. So whatever, which means even the, uh, the wheat and the, um, and the rye that were, that were still in the ground and they began to shoot up a little bit, Anything that the hell did not destroy that is plant and food crops. Locusts come and feast. And they came in. And you know those things have belly to eat. They came to come and eat and destroy. See, the main thing, let me, let me tell you a secret here. One of the greatest reasons why you do battle prayer is that you want the Lord to destroy the economy of your enemies so that you can take over the economy. Yay. Their poverty will make you rich. You buy them out. At that place, if it is a $3 million home, You'll be buying it for fifty dollar, cause they don't want yes. it no more. Amen. A car that they bought for eighty thousand dollars, they will ask you to give them a 
one thousand, you can have it. They don't need it. You can have that damn car. That's what they will tell you. <laughs> yeah. See, God want to deprive them of the things they've been using against you. Money, position of power, material resource, the economy is what makes them to be stubborn that they are in charge of the economy. Never pray for the welfare of your enemies. Please listen to me. Never pray for things to be well with your enemies. Do not do it. Even if you see it written in the Bible that you should pray for your enemies that it will be well with them, don't do it. That you should pray for your evil leaders. As long as they are in the position of leadership because God set them up, that's a lie from hell. Pray for their money, for their material resources to be taken away from them. Please, I'm telling you how to pray. Pray for their economy to collapse. Pray for their houses to perish. Pray for anything that has to do with their, with their economic well-being. That's where we begin. Remember, you begin by taking captive the chief demons and chief fallen angels that is giving them access and power and opportunity. You change them first. Then all these plagues is to lay waste their, lay waste the thing that made them arrogant. Let them lose their position. Let them lose their money, their stocks. That's how real people who mean business, that's how they pray. The Bible says that a smart person, a wise person, you scale the house of a wicked person and you bring it down. As long as they have money in their pocket, as long as they still occupy the position of power, they will never change. And they, and they don't think that they need a change. So why should you pray for them to grow fat like pigs? Why? Why should they grow big like cows and keep lording it over you and doing more bad things? Why do you need to keep seeing their faces on television? She'll, she'll come to an end very soon. doesn't matter whether it's a black president in the Congo, in, the, in, the, in Nigeria, in South Africa, it doesn't matter. Whether it is a Caucasian face, anyway, it does not matter. Whether it's an Arab with a big fat nose, does not matter. Whether it's a short, quiet speaking, loud mouth, Asian, does not matter. The target of your prayer is their economy. Take down their economy and they are gone. Take down their position of authority and they are gone. Those are the places you should target. Don't just pray. Target them. Go ahead. And they shall eat all your trees that bud in the field, and they shall fill thy houses and all thy servants' houses and the houses of all Egyptians, as neither thy fathers nor thy fathers' fathers have seen since the time they were upon the earth unto this day. So he returned and went out from Pharaoh. This Pharaoh's servant said unto him, how long shall he be in a fit unto us? Let the men go, that they may serve the Lord their God. Will so first know that Egypt is destroyed. Okay, which verse? Which verse are you, so that I can follow you? Uh, that's in number seven. Okay, wait, wait, wait. You have to read. Please, everybody, look at verse number seven. Look at verse number seven. This is very important. Read it again, please, my dear. Shall he be in a fence 
unto us. Let the men go, that they may serve the Lord their God. Will the first know that Egypt is destroyed? Are you seeing that? The seven knew that Egypt is destroyed. But the king still wants to be on the throne. It's because of these people. Why don't you let them go? What's wrong with you? We don't have nothing. Everything we own is ruined. Was based on our economy. They were our economy. Why don't you let these people go? What's wrong with you? Egypt is destroyed. There are people who will be on the throne. Even though their nation is dead. Hitler did it. German was being destroyed. He was still in power. Trying to make new rules. Trying to lie to the people. Ah, look at that. Let me see. Knowest thou not yet that Egypt is destroyed? Don't you know that we have no future? Why don't you just let these people go so that we can reconstruct our lives? No food, no crops, nothing. We've lost everything. And power is more important to you than us. I'm showing you why you need to pray to take some people out. If you don't take them out, they will be there until everybody is dead and that person or that man or woman has nobody to reign over and he will be reigning over an empty land and all of you are in your graves. And his servant now approached him. They had a meeting and now they came to him and said, listen, do the right thing. Now, let's see what he did. This is interesting. You see, the greatest psychology you can learn is with the Bible. When you begin to read the Bible the way I read it, the way I interpret it, the way I see it, you begin to know that no, there is no psychology book like this book. If you want to learn how human beings behave, come and read the Bible. Keep reading, my dear. Number one. That's verse number. Finish with number ten. Okay. Okay, let's see. Read verse eleven. Okay, look at verse 10 again. Let's see. Read verse 10 again. And he said unto them, Let the Lord so be with you, as I will let you go and your children. Behold, for evil is before your face. Okay. So 
So now, Pharaoh looked at Moses and Aaron and discovered that they do not want to play any more game. They were no longer negotiating here. When you've tried and they are not listening to you, now, you see, in the place of prayer, that's where you carry God's anger. And you must exercise that anger against your enemies and God's enemies. Go ahead and read first number. But you see, he also quickly, Pharaoh quickly changed his mind. I'll let you go and your little ones. Read verse number 11 and 12 and continue reading. It shall not be so. Now go ye that are men and yeah. serve the Lord. Okay, you see, now he has agreed that their children go. Everybody go. Now he's changing his mind again. Go ahead. They threw them out. They asked them to leave. Continue. After the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thy hand upon the land of Egypt for the grasshoppers, that they may come upon the land of Egypt and eat all the herds of the land, even all that the hail had left. Continue. Okay, now listen. Now listen. All other plagues, all other disasters happen instantly. But when the grasshoppers, the locusts were to come, it took an east wind to bring them. Do you know the reason? You also hear about east wind that parted the Sea of Reed, the Red Sea, into two all night. And all night, the wind blew. And in the morning, the locusts were there. The grasshoppers, the locusts, they were there. Because you see, locusts depends on the wind for their journey. Here, there is a change in judgment. The kind of judgment you are going to see from now on is taken over by the Holy Spirit, wind. Why grasshoppers? Why locusts? God wanted to really completely destroy the economy. It takes the Holy Ghost to create life. It's going to take the Holy Ghost to remove it. Now, there is a different level. There's a change now. First, devils were being dealt with. Nature was being called through different creatures and through thunder and lightning and hell and fire. Now, the war is no longer just the war of the Father. There's somebody who is now involved in this war. And when that person appears, there's a change in event. Event begin to happen very quickly. I'm very happy to reach this place. 
you pray, you see, the different battles you are going to be in in prayer. I want you to be careful that when things begin to change, you don't become afraid in the place of prayer. Because there are times that you will pray, it will seem that you, it will seem like you will feel like you are bigger than the house and taller than the house where you are. There are different levels where yielding will take you to. Here, the Holy Ghost now is involved in this warfare. The wind. The wind of God is now involved. Things are going to happen quickly. Pray, please, please, I'm begging you. Pray until you reach this place. Don't leave the presence of God. Pray until, because there is a place you reach in this kind of prayer that you you become God's battle axe, his sword. The Holy Ghost now takes you into battle. Are you aware that it was the Holy Ghost that took David into battle? Most of the wars of the Bible that they won, it came as a result of the ability to be with their God in the secret place or in the place of offering and burnt sacrifice. They left that place to go and win warfare, to go and win their battles. And wherever people are willing to observe and do the will of God and yield, Sooner or later, the Holy Ghost come there and take over the prayer. You should be there until the Holy Ghost takes over. Because when one the Holy Ghost takes over, everything begins to happen very, very quickly. When one the Holy Ghost arrives in battle, everything begins to happen very, very quickly. If it was for destruction, it's going to happen very quickly. The place will not be left with anything. It will be turned over. Wherever you see the Holy Ghost in battle, the entire place, it will no longer be negotiation. Because with the Holy Ghost, it's not negotiation. All this time is the Father and the Son at work through Moses and Aaron. Now they've handed over the battle to the Holy Spirit. Oh, Jesus, thank you, Lord. Wow. Mm, 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 mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I am a very different person. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, thank you, Jesus, for the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father, for the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Ghost. People of God, you don't know. You don't know the Holy Ghost. If you know the Holy Ghost, you will be running from one end of where you are to the other. You will be shouting. When once the Holy Ghost arrives, everything changes very quickly. Please, 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 Geneva, continue to read. This is, I'm in a different spot here. I feel this. I know this. Continue, my dear. Verse 14. So the grasshoppers went up upon all the land of Egypt and remained in all the quarters of Egypt so greedy as grasshoppers, like to these were never before. Neither after them shall be such, for they covered all the face 
of the earth, so that the land was dark. And they did eat all the herbs of the land and all the fruits of the trees, which the hail had left, so that there was no green thing left upon the tree, nor upon nor among the herds of the fields throughout all the land of Egypt. Therefore, Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron, Moses and Aaron in haste, and said, I have sinned against the Lord your God and against you. And now forgive me my sin only this one, and pray unto the Lord your God that he may take away from me this death only. Moses then went out from Pharaoh and prayed unto the Lord. And the Lord turned a mighty strong west wind and took away the grasshoppers and violently cast them into the Red Sea, so that there remained not one grasshopper in all the land of Egypt. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he did not let the children of Israel go. Again, the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thy hand toward heaven, and there may be upon the land of Egypt darkness, even darkness that may be felt. Then Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven, and there was a black darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. No man saw another, neither rose up from the place where he was. For three days. All the of Israel have light where they dwell. What do you guys think about that? That's a miracle. That was total eclipse. Day and night. There was no there was no day. There was continuous night for three days. Now why do you do you think this make the people to be strong? Or now the children of Egypt, the, the people of Egypt were now in hiding. They now knew that whatever is pursuing them is pursuing them hard, is pretty pretty bad. Continue. Verse 24. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and said, Go serve the Lord. Only your sheep and your cattle shall abide. And your children should go with you. And Moses said, Do you know why he said that? Do you know why he said that? You know why he said that? Leave your flocks, leave your animals. See how tricky this man is? Because almost every livestock of the Egyptians have been destroyed. So you can now go with your children and, you know, go. Read that place again, please, so that you guys know how people think. Then Moses called for, I'm sorry, then Pharaoh called for Moses and said, Go serve the God. Go serve the Lord. Only your sheep and your cattle shall abide, and your children shall go with you. Did you hear that? Go with your children. But leave your goat, your cows, your camels, your donkeys, your sheep. Leave them here. What does that tell you? What does that tell you? The land of Goshen where the children of Israel are staying, the economy is booming. The rest of Egypt, the economy is gone. So now he, wa he wanted to use their economy to start off. When they are gone, do you know how many animals you are talking about? Millions. Now he turned around, sent his people to go and look at the land of Goshen and see how everything is booming there. They are eating good. They are looking slick. Pampered. And these other people are ruined. No economy. Nothing. So you, you guys can now go. But leave your economy here. And your money. Because this livestock is money. 
That's the economy of the people right there. Don't harvest your crop. Leave them. You can now go. So he now wants to send them empty-handed. So that he can now go in and take their livestock and restart his own economy. Let's see what Moses said. Whoo! Let's see what Moses said. Continue, my dear. There you go. Yep. We are taking everything that belongs to us. We are not leaving anything here. Those of you who become angry when something happens, learn not to. Learn how to be tactical and logistic. How to negotiate. Without ins all these times, Moses and Aaron have never insulted this man. All this time, they have been very respectful. But sir, yeah, we would have appreciated leaving them here. We don't need them. But you know what? We're going to need them to worship our God. Our God is so huge. So we are taking everything. See how they are putting it. We will have appreciated leaving them here. We don't really need them. Our God is greater than all this. But because we need it for sacrifices, we need them for a lot of other things. Especially to save our God, which is a different way of saying, we need them to restart our life before our God. We cannot save our God without our means of survival, our own economy. Our own means of transport. How are we going to even journey to where we are heading? So we are not leaving not even a hoof. We are not leaving not one animal here. Continue, my dear. We don't even know how we are going to start our life. That's the coded word for. We don't even know how we are going to restart our life and our economy. So we need everything. See, that's how people really talk. Good diplomacy. Go ahead, my dear. Now he has sealed. This is what we were waiting for. When people challenge you to this level and said you shall die, you know what that means? It means that with their own mouth, they've decided that they themselves will die. They are ready to die. And that is what evil people are ready to do. They are ready to kill you and they are ready to kill themselves. You will not see my face anymore, which is fine. No problem. The day you try to see my face, you will die. I don't need to see your faces anymore. I'm done with all of you. I'm mad at all of you. Everything is against me. And who caused it? Was it not you? Get thee out of my presence and don't come back to me. Go ahead. You don't want to agree with me. Why should I? Continue, please, my dear. Verse 29. The Moses said, Thou hast said well. Thou hast said well. That's it. That, 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 that I said, well, that's fine. I'm for it. 
Yeah, we would like not to see your face no more. Ugly. You said well. We love it. That's how real people talk. No quarreling here. But what you've said is fine with us. We don't want to see your face no more anyway. And we will like it that way. Bye. See ya. Is that the end of that? Yep. Now let's go to verse number 11 and just start something and then we will stop. That is interesting. Wow. I'm ready. Now the Lord has said unto Moses, Yet will I bring one plague more upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. After that, he will let you go hence. When he letteth you go, he shall at once chase you hence. Okay, we will stop there. We are going to begin at Exodus 11 tomorrow. Tomorrow is Saturday. I will be broadcasting tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning, I'll be broadcasting very, very early in the morning. 7 o'clock, 7 o'clock central in the morning, which is 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Tomorrow morning. Please come to this conference. Bring your family. Because we want to bring the Egyptian story to an end. Then we'll rest and then we'll go to another We'll go to another place of warfare and then begin to just pick. Just begin to choose and pick. But I want you to see. Hallelujah. I want you to see how real warfare is done. I'm going to take you to the walls of Jericho so that you know what was happening there. Geneva, please remind me to do a walk on the walls of Jericho as part of the supernatural warfare. We need it. Mary, remind me to do things about Jericho, the walls of Jericho, as part of supernatural warfare. Because many of you do not know that side of it. All right. So we are stopping there at Exodus 11. We'll begin from verse 1 tomorrow morning. So we'll be meeting tomorrow morning. And then we will meet tomorrow afternoon at the exact time, 12 noon, central time. We, we want to go through a lot quickly. Because before you know it, June will be over. And tomorrow evening, we will be praying very seriously. Yes. Tomorrow midnight, we'll be praying. We'll be having a church service in the midnight. Things, things are going to just oh, move. Yeah. yeah, things are going to move very quickly. Tomorrow midnight... We are going to be having a church service, a real church service. It's going to be big because there's, this, there's a reading that is going to happen that will shake the world. Yes. At 12 midnight central time, which is 1 o'clock Eastern time on Saturday night, God is going to pass over. There will be yes. a pass over. There will be a pass over. Amen. We are going to do a celebration of Passover. There will be communion service. What happened in the land of Egypt is going to happen around the world. I want to thank you very much for, for coming tonight to come and hear how supernatural warfare happens. This is Archbishop Idikai Mary. I love you all. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for listening to the music. Thank you for spending time. This is what is going to keep you the rest of your life. What, what you are learning with me. The ministration that I am doing is going to save your life forever. Do, do not, yeah, do not, for, do not forget those of you who, who loves your Archbishop Idikai Mary. 
do not forget to put me in your in your will june 18 i'm celebrating i'm celebrating my birthday and i want you all to pray for me if god blesses you bless me and I look forward to seeing all of you tomorrow morning. This is incredible. This is great. Remember what I told you? When once the Holy Ghost arrive, everything is going very fast. Mm -hmm. And chapter 11 tells you how things just went very quickly. Pray until the wind comes. Good night.